Hey everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. It's been quite a while since I've done a craft with me. So I thought I would take you back to my messy craft area. There's always so much ink and paint and even though I wiped it down, you know, you know the struggle. It's the real craft desk, not the pretty one. So I thought I would just take you here, visit with you a little bit and create a project with you that I'm excited about. We're going to be um, using these pages to make journal cards and this video is also possible because of Craftspire and I'll have a link below and a coupon code, but they sent me these uh, clear stickers that we're going to be using as well. So make sure you check out their shop and use the coupon. It's a pretty decent coupon. So let's get right into this. First, I want to show you how I made these papers. Um, but I, I made a whole bunch of them the other day and it was a lot of fun. So instead of using a jelly plate and doing jelly printing, I decided, because I didn't want to go grab it from the other room, to try something else. And this does not have as much versatility as a jelly plate. It does not replace it at all. But probably everybody has an old baking sheet that maybe they coffee dye paper on or uh, you could get one at a thrift store or something like that. I don't know. This one's warped. It's been coffee, coffee, ever, you know, it's a mess. So what I did, and I leave the colors on here because you never know what combination you're going to get. But this, I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Um, I have a glimmer mist, a tattered angels glimmer mist. Oh, in the blue raspberry color. I got this a couple years ago at Tuesday morning, back when Tuesday morning had good stuff. I went there yesterday and it was incredibly sad. I did get a couple things, but man, it's sad how they barely have anything anymore. All right. And then I have some acrylic artist ink. This is from Hobby Lobby. Um, I got it on clearance a few years ago. So in other words, I'm using these up because I've had them for years. And what I did, okay, this is just... Uh, computer paper. So you could use 20 pound or 24 pound. I think this is 24 pound, but it really doesn't matter. They're half size just because when I ship labels, I print them and then I cut it in half, tape on the label, and then I save the extras. So these, and then I figure out what to do with them. So we're going to just do a couple because that's not the whole point of this video, but I found what worked well was like three sprays and the sprayer's old and it barely works anymore so pardon me and then I this dropper doesn't even work anymore so I just kind of splattered on a little bit of the green ink and then I took the paper and just wiped it down and there you go and so just whatever I got um I would just spray two or three times and then splatter a little bit of ink and lay down another sheet and pick it up just like that. And everyone's a little bit different. Then when I was done and I had done as many pages as I wanted, I just got a water bottle with some water in it lightly misted over and tried to see if there was enough left to pick up. This may or may not be the case, but you can see there and you can see a little bit of pink that it picked up as well from something else. So you might be able to pick a little bit up that way. So that might be something fun to play around with to get your papers. So then the second step I want to take to make these journal cards is grab my stack that's dry because I made these two days ago, I think. And then I'm going to grab a stencil. Now, any stencil will work. This is my stencil bin. And I haven't decided what I want to do. Maybe this one, this Tim Holtz Chevron. But you can use any stencil that you want. Maybe even rubber stamps would work but I think we'll use a stencil. And then another color ink, I'm gonna be using Distress Oxide in Walnut Stain because I wanna to tone down these colors just a little bit because I'm going to be using 
these clear stickers on it and I want a modern meets vintage. So here's my little bit of modern. And if I wanted to make it super bright and fun, I could grab like, this one is a persimmon color or orange or pink or something like that. But, and then I'm gonna fill in some of the places where, when I make a mess, who cares, right? Just put something under it. And just fill in some of the areas where there's less color. No scientific formula for this. It's just where I feel like visually it needs something. Okay, just like that. And I'm just gonna go through my pile and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, some of them may need more or less depending on how much ink got on the paper or honestly, how much ink I actually want on it. We'll do another one or two before we go to the next step. This isn't necessarily a mass making video, but you can turn it into a mass making video. We'll try one more. You can see each one is different and they're going to be cut down into journal cards. So we're never really sure what's going to show till we get into it. Maybe I'll just do a pinch in the middle for some fun. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to create the base of our journal card. And you can take, I'm gonna grab some book pages. I have some book pages in my scrap bin to the left here. I know I do. Um, grab some book pages that you don't care about, maybe text block or boring pages, magazine pages. Um, <laughs> these were messily ripped out of a Gray's Anatomy book, but you can see I have a lot of index pages here. And these are going to add texture and substance to my journal cards because this is not cardstock. And even if I fold it in half, it's still gonna be pretty lightweight. And I really want this to have just a little bit of oomph to it, I guess. So I'm gonna, because these are light pages, I'm gonna take three of them and a glue stick. I actually like the Amazon Basics glue sticks. They're pretty decent. And what I love about them is that they really are smooth gliding on. They don't make a huge mess. And I'm not gonna go perfectly. I'm just, because you're not gonna see any of this. I'm just easily adding a little bit of glue just to tack them together because I plan on stitching around them. So this is just tacking it so they're not sliding. All right, and then I'm going to add my paper to the front. And then I'm gonna flip it. I'm just creating bulk here. And pretty much cheap bulk because I'm using all bunch of extra things that could be thrown out. All right, so there's my sandwich. Now we're gonna need to cut it down and I'm really hoping that this paper cutter works, otherwise I've gotta bring my big one, but this one's on its last leg or I have to replace the blade. All right, you choose the size um, and I'm gonna probably do Four. So I'm going to start with four and a half. That way I can, this is not going to work. Okay. Let's grab out the other paper cutter. Yes, it's big, but that's okay. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Maybe I should check on things. Okay. So I'm going to start by measuring four and a half. No, but we're going to have to go to four and a quarter because I really messed that up. Okay. We just want a straight line. We're gonna flip it. Well, no, we're gonna decide how long. So 
by six. And then we'll make sure we're straight on this side, four. So now we have four by six. Feels really nice. We're gonna stitch the edges later. Now when it comes to the scraps, you have to decide what you may or may not want to keep. Some of this is kind of glued down here and mm, I might actually be able to make a smaller journal card here. That was not the plan, but maybe a little tag. Why not? I'm not gonna overly keep these scraps because they were pretty much trash to start out with, but if I can get a little extra tag, then I will do so. I'm gonna leave my cutter right here so I'm not going back and forth, back and forth. And again, I'm going to layer three of these pages. You could try layering more or less, depending on what weight, the feel you want. You could try crumpling it before you glued it together if maybe you wanted more of a crinkly textured feel. I'm using what I need to use up. All right, so once I layer three, then I'm going to layer an inked page on the front and back. It does make for a good mass making project if you do lots at a time. Okay, and then I need to get this down to probably a four by six size, but I want straight cuts. So however, however I decide to do that, because some of these are pretty wonky. I don't want to waste a ton of paper, but I want to make sure things are straight. So here we are with our six inch length and our four inch width. Perfect. And we're going to peek at our scraps. Now, this I can keep. Well, no. Yeah, I can. I'll keep that for something later. If they're not glued on too much, I can use those for a different project. These I'm going to throw out, though. <clears throat> okay, now I could keep going, and I will later, off camera, keep going through all of my papers, but we're going to just turn these two into journal cards. I hope you'll take a second um, after you check out Craftspire's website to take a look at my shop because I will have this set when it's completed listed for sale. And I will also have, this is commercial break. <laughs> I just finished this set of bird snippets. It's a giant set. It was so fun to make. These birds came from Vintage Image Club and I have layers and buttons and oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm not going to take you through all of it since that's not what the video is about, but um, these will also be listed over there. So when you're heading over there, maybe take a peek and see if you want that. All right, now I have to decide, do I want rounded corners or straight corners? Um, and I think I'm just going to go with straight corners since everything looks nice and crisp and clean. Um, and I was going to say before I go any further, I'll stitch it, but I'm going to take that back and I'm going to add the stickers in just a minute. But I want to add a little bit of stamping to it. I wasn't planning this step, but I do think some black script stamp would look really good before we add on our sticker. So I do have my favorite script stamp right here. Um, this was from Amazon. This is Inka Dinka Doo. I don't know if it has a name or not, but it's relatively big. I love this one. And I'm trying to use uh, this black ink here and we're at the end, end of it. It's about time to let this thing go. But I'm not going to overthink this. Just push down a little bit of text. And it's not really crisp. You could use a really nice crisp black ink. Um, 
some kind of an archival ink and I'm just trying to use things up. And honestly, by the time I'm done with this, is these journal cards are basically free for me to create, seeing as the inks I got on sale years ago and they're already, the sprayer doesn't work, uh, the eyedropper doesn't work. I'm, I'm pretty much using up trash and then the copy paper is leftover scraps. The index papers are leftover scraps. The stencil, you're using such little bit of ink. And then these beautiful stickers were um, gifted to me from Craftspire. So it winds up being a really cost effective project for me to do. And I'm gonna just stick with that type of theme here. Just add that that text just for a little bit extra in the background. All right, now we're going to get to the fun part here and look through some of these gorgeous stickers. I was really surprised at how many came in a pack. I was expecting less. These are really awesome. These are mushrooms. And I know they're hard to see because they're see-through, but as soon as we put them down on the paper, we're gonna be able to see how great these are. And I really don't want to overthink this part of the process because I haven't overthought it yet. So we're just going to go with, with it, go with it. The hardest part for me with these stickers is removing the back. My, my nails are usually not long. So tip and I'm just seeing if I can do this with my nail. If I can't, one thing that I've done in the past that tends to work really well is get um, like a safety pin or a needle. I need a better light. I can't even see. But if you can get that edge, you can peel it right off. But of course, since I'm filming it, I'm not going to be able to do it. Come on. So while I'm working on this, oh, there we go. You just have to get that pin in between the two layers and then just pull it right off. There we go. And what's really neat about these clear stickers is you're going to see the mixed media behind it. You can see the script behind it. You can see the colors poking through. And I think that's really fantastic. Same thing here. Usually once I've worked with the brand for a while, I've learned the trick to getting the back off, but I've never worked with this brand before. So figuring it out. Here we go. <clears throat> so beautiful that you can see through it. Oh, wow. All right. So my sewing machine is behind me over here. So I'll pause you while I stitch around the edges and then I'll show you how that looks. I am back. There's the stitching. Isn't that beautiful? I love the four by six size too. There's so much room. You can um, actually write over the entire back. I love the way they feel. It's almost buttery because of those index pages that we used in the middle. I'm going to go back to my brown and I'm just going to ink up the edges to give it a finished look. I don't want to go on and on um, doing it time over and over again, but you get the idea and how beautifully these stickers look on a project. Don't forget that coupon code. You can really stock up on stickers using that. I believe it's five dollars off of 40 but I'll have that in the description box but here they are and I'm going to do a whole bunch more off camera I just wanted you to see how beautiful they turned out and the splatterings of blue and green and then those vintage walnut colors thank you so much for watching maybe you crafted along with me if you created anything I would love to see it if you'd go over to my Facebook group nevermore creations junk journals and friends I would love to see what you made don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't and I'll see all of you next time with more journaling inspiration